Mouse Shoes for active boys and girls. And John C. Robert Shoes for bigger boys and men. Present... Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Space Academy USA in the year 2354 A.D. The world beyond tomorrow, where space cadets defend the liberties of the planet and safeguard the cause of universal peace in the age of the conquest of space. Where today, Tom Corbett and his unit mates risk their lives in a desperate attempt to rescue the crew of the runaway rocket. Compact little job, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, not a square inch of wasted space. Boy, this wagon is really going to travel. Hey, here's the astrogation and radar station. I wonder why they put it down the control deck. Trying to save weight in space topside, I guess. Didn't you notice that this ship is much smaller than the standard rocket scout? Yeah, that's right. Well, I can't wait to blast off and put this baby through a first speed trial. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of yourself, aren't you? Commander Arkwright hasn't even picked the crew yet. You know, you, uh, you can't be sure we'll get the assignment. Can I? Listen, I got inside information. Oh, hello, Eric. Hiya, Tom. Roger, I didn't know you fellas were aboard this ship. Just having a look around. What are you doing here? Uh, same thing. She's a beautiful ship, isn't she? Sure is. I can hardly wait for the speed trial tomorrow. Why? You don't think you're going to be aboard, do you? Well, I don't know. Now, why haven't we got this operation all sewed up tight? How do you figure that? Well, it's easy. The Polaris unit is the best unit in the academy. Oh, what other no. crew would get the job? Take it easy, Roger. Yeah, you're really sticking your neck out. Am I? Well, I'll make you bet, Eric. My next ten hours of scrub detail against yours, the Polaris crew takes this ship out on a speed trial tomorrow. You're awfully sure of yourself. Exactly ten hours, sure. Okay, Roger, you're on. It's a bet. Take good care of that hand, Eric. You're gonna need it. Thanks. But until the orders are posted, you don't mind if I go on looking around your ship, do you? Oh, no. Be my guest. See you later. So long, Tom. So long, Eric. <laughs> Roger, you don't usually make bets like that unless you're pretty sure of yourself. So? So exactly how much do you know about the flight orders for this ship? Well, I happened to talk to the O.D. this morning, and, uh... He just mentioned that we were being det detached from regular duty and placed on special assignment tomorrow. And what about it? Well, the only special assignment tomorrow is the speed trial of this ship. Catch? Oh, I catch, all right. You tricked Eric. No, I didn't. I took one fact, added it to another. And, and came up with minus 10 hours of scrub duty. You ought to be shot. Junior, even that would be better than scrub duty. No. Oh. scheduled for 5 a.m., Commander. Our course will take us to Mars, we'll circle the planet once, and then we'll return to Earth. Fine. You, uh, you don't expect the escort vessel to be able to keep up with the rocket scout, do you, Strong? Oh, no, of course not, Commander, but they can escort us perhaps uh, a quarter of the way and then meet us on the return flight. Fine. Now, how about the crews? Well, I've cleared Cadets Corbett, Astro, Manning, and Radisson for duty, sir. Of course, I haven't posted the order yet, in case you might prefer someone else. Well, who'll be our power deck officer on the scout? Cadet Radisson. The other three boys can follow in the escort vessel. That's the, the Polaris. I see. I think that should be quite satisfactory. Mm -hmm. You can post the order. Yes, sir. And I'm sure that all four of the boys will be proud and happy to take part in this operation. Hi, gang. You know, this new rocket scout we're about to speed test is really something. It's perfectly designed for the job. You all know how important that is. And that's why these new Red Goose shoes, called Emery, are so great. They're perfectly designed for those warm summer days ahead. They're a brown, U-tipped Oxford, with a brown tweed nylon mesh that gives you plenty of cool comfort, and yet doesn't soil or show dirt, like most light-colored meshes. And the Emery has a narrow, snug-fitting heel, and also that sturdy, long-wearing interflex sole. As a matter of fact, these smart-looking shoes are the last word for summer comfort. And they look just like your older brother's sports shoes. Everyone's wearing them, fellas. So how about you? 
Why don't you ask Mom and Dad to get you the emery today? They're also available in brown with eggshell nylon mesh. Oh, and, uh, and don't forget your Space Cadet identification bracelet. Absolutely free with every pair of Red Goose or John C. Roberts shoes. All right, gang, stand by for the speed trial. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, Roger, what are you doing out here? Waiting for you, you crummy double-crosser. What are you talking about? You know, blasted well what I'm talking about. You conned me into that bet. I conned you? Yeah, you knew you were assigned to the scout. That's why you made the bet. Look, hot shot, I didn't know any more than you did. Tom told me what the O.D. said. He just outsmarted yourself, that's all. Don't make me laugh. I'm not doing any scrub duty for you. Okay. If you want a Welch out of it? Wait a minute. Who are you calling a Welcher? Well, there's nobody here but me and you. You figure it out. All right. Hey. Well, you What's going on here? Nothing. We were, uh, just talking, sir. Oh, I see. And do you usually do your talking with your fists, Manning? Or were you just showing him that you had clean fingernails? Well, no, sir. We... Well, you see, we... I've seen enough. And we're supposed to blast off in five minutes, and you should be on the Polaris right now. Yes, sir. Well, Radisson? It was nothing, sir, just a slight difference of opinion. Mm-hmm. And I trust this difference of opinion won't interfere with the speed trial. Now, you get aboard the Polaris. Commander Arkwright's waiting for us. Aye, aye. <laughs> Check in. All right, guy. Ready to raise ship, Astro? All set, Tom. Hey, Roger just came through here on his way topside. He's mad enough to chew nails. I'll bet. Those 10 hours of extra scrub duty wouldn't improve anybody's disposition. Oh, here he comes now. I'll talk to you later. Aren't you forgetting something, Roger? Why? Your mop and bucket. Why, very funny. <laughs> Not nearly as funny as you, thinking you had such a cinch bet. Plug it, Jets, will you? <laughs> Rocket cruiser Polaris, Cadet Corbett here. This is Captain Strong aboard the Scout. Are you ready to raise ship? Yes, sir. Fine. We'll blast off in 30 seconds. You'll follow at a one-minute interval. We'll maintain contact in space on this frequency. Right, sir. That's all. And transmission. Straight from luck, sir. And transmission. All stations, prepare for standard blast-off procedure. See that they don't. Control deck to power deck, check in. All right, guys. Ready to begin the speed trials, Radisson. You can set it for a three quarter space speed. Three quarter speed, I. On speed, sir. That's fine. 
Now, we'll hold this speed for the first leg of the course. Then on the return trip from Mars, we'll, uh, we'll open full throttle. Aye, aye. And, sir. Yes? I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know when we start pulling away from the Polaris. Hey, Tom, check in. Go ahead, Roger. What do you think the Polaris is, an old garbage skull? Come on, get the lead out of her tubes. Let's fly it. Now, wait a minute, Roger. You know, we're not in a race with that rocket scout. No, but we're supposed to keep up with her as long as we can. She's pulling away. Sorry, pal. There's nothing we can do about it. We're on full space speed now. Just stand in your viewport and wave goodbye, Roger. Go blow your jets, both of you. <laughs> Boy, is he frying. I know, and I can't figure out which is making him matter. The fact that Eric's on that ship, or that he's got 10 hours of extra scrub duty ahead of him. Either one is enough for him. Well, what do we do now? Cut down speed, take a holding orbit in this area until we hear from Captain Strong on the way back. Hey, that scout is almost out of sight. She's really traveling. Yeah. The rate she's going, she'll hit Mars in no time flat. We're almost at the end of our orbit around Mars, Strong. We'll be on course back to Earth in... 30 seconds. That's fine, Commander. That's when we'll really open her up. We'll find out how much speed this ship has. Control deck to power deck. Check in, please. Power deck, aye. Madison, we're almost ready to wind her up. How are things going down there? Smooth as silk, sir. All set to rest. On course, Strong. All right, Radisson. Full space speed. Full speed, aye. On speed, sir. All right, now that's fine. Just hold it there. Stay on your toes. If there's any sign of trouble, any any hint that anything might go wrong, you you cut her back now. Don't worry, sir. There won't be any such thing as that. Great galaxy. Hello, Captain Strong. Well, what's the matter, Radisson? Something's wrong with the main control panel, sir. It's short circuit, I think. Well, they cut down all rockets. We'll travel up one quarter speed until he finds the trouble. But, sir, I've tried and, and nothing happened. As a matter of fact, I think we're going even faster. Well, then shut off all power completely and we'll drift. I, I stand by. What do you suppose happened down there, Strong? I don't know, Commander. Seems like just a simple short in the, in the electrical system, but could be anything. Strong, we're accelerating. Power deck, check in. Aye, aye. What's the matter with you, Radisson? I told you to shut off all power. I did, sir. Every switch is closed. You better get down there, Strong. I'll take over here. Yes. Oh, Commander Arkwright, may I suggest that you scan the area, see if there are any ships near us, just in case? Right. That's just what I intended to do, Strong. Just think, Tom. When this trip is over, we're free men. The whole summer off. You planned your vacation yet, Astro? What's the plan? I'm going home to Venus and sit. Just sit and do nothing. When did you ever do anything else? Well, if it isn't the scrub duty kid himself, we don't have to ask him what he's going to do on his vacation. Cheer up, Roger. We'll be with you in spirit, working right alongside of you with every stroke of your mop and broom. Okay, okay. <laughs> You've been playing that record long enough. Knock it off, will you? How long do we have to hang around here anyway? You know as well as I do, Roger. Until the rocket scout's on the return leg of the speed trial. Haven't you heard from the scout? Nah, not a peep. You better stand by top that. Because if they come back at the same rate of speed they went out, we'll be hearing from them pretty soon now. All right, try it now. This may do it. Keep your fingers crossed, Radisson. No use, sir. We're accelerating more and more. You've got to slow down, Radisson. We'll be nailed to the deck. I know, sir. I, I can hardly stay on my feet. All right, come on. Come on, let's tackle it again. Sir, there's another way. Well? Disconnect the whole electrical circuit. Just rip it off. Well, we'll be completely helpless, Radisson. I realize that, sir, but at the rate we're accelerating, we're almost helpless now. If you manage, we won't be able to do anything. Not even move, not even get out of the ship. All right. All right, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Our whole communication system will be out. I better send a distress alert first. Power deck to control deck. Check in. Captain Strong to Commander Arkwright. Come in, please. Come in. 
Control that guy. We're past the orbit of Venus, Tom. Hold this course. Right. Look, Roger, how much of a margin for error do we have? If we don't intercept the scout on this heading, do we get another chance? The only chance we'll have is to take a hot bath in the sun. It's this heading or not at all. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Tom, I patched the power controls in up here. It's getting hot below deck. Well, it's not going to be much cooler here, Astro. Well, uh, maybe not, but at least I can roast in company. What do you plan to do, board the scout and find out what's wrong? There isn't time, Astro. We've got to take first things first. The important thing now is to push that scout off course. Steer it away from the sun. We can find out what's wrong with it afterwards. Maybe, but at the speeds we're traveling, we're liable to wreck both ships. I know, Astro, but there's no other way. Unless we push that scout away from the sun, it'll become a flying oven. <laughs> Any sign of the Polaris strong? Afraid not, Commander. We're so far off course anyway, it's going to take them some time to find us. Aye. This is the one commodity we don't have. I've been in space a lot longer than you have, Strong. I know what it means when it gets this hot. How far away are we? We're far enough away so we, we still have a chance. It all depends on the cadets now. I can't take much more of this, Tom. And you've got to, Astro. A couple of more minutes and we'll... Draw the guy. Cut down speed, Junior. We're coming up to the scout. Right. One quarter space speed, Astro. One quarter, I. Right. Correct heading to come alongside, 20 degrees left. Two second burst on starboard steering rockets, Astro. Right. All right, hold her there. We'll be alongside the scout in 30 seconds. Can't be too soon to suit me. You stand by, Astro. As soon as we get alongside, I'm going to need plenty of power. Yeah, and I'm going to need plenty of nerve. No use, Commander. Say, it's no use. We're too close to the sun. Those cadets could never get in here with us. Captain Flayton. Well, what happened, Storm? Did we hit something? I don't know, Commander. Captain Storm! Captain Storm! Well, what, what happened right The Polaris is alongside, sir. The Polaris? Where? On the port side, sir. I saw it through the power deck viewport. Can we still have a chance? Not much, I'm afraid, Strong. Those cadets can't turn this ship at right angles. And they simply put their necks in a noose. You all set, Astro? All set, Tom. Hey, what's holding up the work? Damp your tooth, Roger. And leave us alone. Now just watch your scanner and tell us when we made enough of a turn. Okay, okay, go ahead. All right, Astro, port steering rocket. One quarter, sustained burst. Port one quarter, I... Ah, oh, it's not enough. Increase to one half. Tom, we're bouncing against that scout. We're going to rip a hole in our plate. So what? Give me three quarters. I think we're doing it, Tom. We're turning. Come on, baby. Come on. All right. Sustain power, Astro. Keep pouring it on. Yeah, I hate to think of what's happening to those tubes with this load. Buy a whole set of new ones. Okay, down there. That's enough. We turned her. We're in the clear. All right, Astro. Cut off all power. Oh. Well, boy, we did it. I don't know how, but we did it. Yeah, and you know something, Tom? I've changed my mind about my vacation. What do you mean? Well, if you think I can stand the Venusian jungle heat after this, you're space happy. I'm heading for the Martian ice cap. <laughs> Gang, we'll rejoin Tom and the cadets at Space Academy in just a moment. But right now, let me say on behalf of all Red Goose shoe dealers all over the country that we hope that you've enjoyed our participation and presentation of the thrilling adventures of Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets 
as much as we've enjoyed bringing them to you. And it's your loyalty to Red Goose Shoes for active boys and girls and John C. Roberts Shoes for bigger boys and men that have made this program possible. And now... This is Patty McCormick, Eddie Bryan... And Uncle Joe King saying so long and wishing you a very, very pleasant summer. Well, Strong, the Polaris crew certainly ended its school term in a blaze of glory. If it hadn't been for those boys, the rocket scout would have been destroyed. Not to mention us, sir. Well, boys, ordinarily this would call for a few days' liberty. But since you're going on your summer vacation, I think that's a rather empty gesture. Maybe you could give us credit for next term, sir. I'll, uh... Consider that, Astro. Are you boys just about ready to leave? All we have to do is pack, sir, and then we're on our way. Well, where's Manny? Manny? Uh, he'll be a little late, sir. Uh, he's catching up on his homework, sir. Ah, go blow your jets. <laughs> well, goodbye, boys. Have a good summer. Thank you, sir. Same to you. And that goes for all you space cadets, too. We've had a swell time being with you. We hope you enjoyed being out in space with us as much as we enjoyed having you aboard. And thanks for all your letters. Just because we're going on summer vacation, don't stop writing. That's one sure way to keep us blasting on all rockets. So until next fall, when we hope to blast off with you again, spaceman's luck to you all. Watch for the new interplanetary adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, next fall. Check your local newspaper for time and station. Jackson Beck. This has been a Rock Hill production brought to you by Red Goose Shoes and John C. Roberts Shoes. This is the Dumont Television Network.